Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and today I thought we'd take a look at this Commodore 1802 monitor. I did pick this up about a year ago off eBay and I actually did a video on it at the time so I'll link that up there if you want to have a look. Uh, but failing that, uh, let me give you a quick rundown. Um, yes, I bought it off eBay. It was the same model that we had growing up uh, in the late 80s, early 90s with our Commodore 64C. So I did want to find another one that matched it. Obviously this one has seen better days. It is a little bit yellowed. Uh, the front door panel was missing, so I 3D printed a replacement, but obviously I haven't bothered trying to color match it because I'd be color matching it to uh, yellowed plastic. So I'm not too worried about the physical appearance at the moment, but I do want to get this looking good on screen. Uh, I'll put up some images here, but as you can see, the convergence is pretty bad. We're supposed to have just a bunch of white dots on the screen, but instead we've got blue separating from the white dots and there's little bits of red dots everywhere. So it is pretty misconverged. Also, the color is quite dull and I had to crank the color up to the maximum. And when doing that, it uh, made the image look even worse, although colorful. Also, the uh, vertical height and horizontal width is pretty far off and the centering is pretty bad. So a lot of issues with this monitor. So we're going to pop it open, make some adjustments, and hopefully we can get it looking half decent, at least good enough so it's not distracting when you're actually using it. Uh, I do also have to put in this little switch for the front panel because the switch on this was broken. The seller actually sold it as uh, not working. And that's because the broken selector switch, which actually lets you go between composite, lumachroma and a monochrome signal was broken so you couldn't actually select the right input so I just hardwired it for the lumachroma input but we do need to replace that switch so I can actually use the other inputs so um let's crack this thing open take a look inside get this switch in and then we'll make some adjustments So we've got two screws down the bottom here, one screw holding the input panel and two screws up the top that need to come out. Also need to remove this from its little channel. All right, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Obviously the standard CRT warnings apply here. So if you've never worked on a CRT before, don't start with this video. Um, there are potentially high voltages still stored up in this tube, even after you've powered it off and unplugged it. So if you've never done this before, I do not recommend starting with watching me do it. All right, before I go poking around, let's just make sure the CRT is actually discharged. We might hear a little click from this. Snap, crackle, pop, if I can get under the anode cap. Oh, there was the tiniest. All right, I'm happy with that. So let's try and get this board out and replace this switch. So here's where our switch should be. So I just need to remove the little jumper links that I put in there. Let's go with the manual pump. And with any luck, I should be able to just pull these little links out. There's one. All right, links are out. So let's clean this up and get the switch in. All right. Perfect fit. And I'll just cover up those holes. All right, cool. That's our switch reinstalled. So while I've got the board out, I might just go around and check some of the electrolytic capacitors, make sure they haven't gone too far out of spec. Uh, this thing was pretty filthy when I first got it, so I did have to go over the board and clean it with a bunch of cotton buds. But uh, I don't remember if I checked the capacitors at that time. So let me do that and uh, see if we find anything that's way off spec. All right, so after going around the board, I did find a few capacitors that seem marginal. Interestingly enough, these are all the same. They're all 10 microfarad, 50 volt. And uh, yeah, they all read around seven microfarad with a fairly high ESR. So I did replace all of these, 
but honestly, I don't expect it to make much of a difference, if any. Uh, most of them were in the video input circuitry, so I think they're just removing the DC offset from any input signals, and one or two of them were on the luminance output from the Toshiba TA7698APIC, which uh, is basically like the jungle chip for this monitor. I don't expect any of that to make a difference, but at least I can rule out capacitor issues on this board. And uh, knowing that the ones that were marginal have been replaced, I don't really have to worry about replacing any of the others, uh, at least not in the near future. So um, let's get all this back reinstalled in the monitor. We'll test out that switch, make sure everything's working there, and then we'll do some fine tuning adjustments. Okay, everything is reconnected, so let's plug this back in. I'm not expecting anything exciting to happen here. We just want to make sure that it still works. Yep, we have an image. Obviously, we have nothing plugged into it at the moment, but it uh, still powers up just fine, so that's always a good start. Let's uh, just make sure that our switch is working and we can actually select these different inputs. So we'll start off with the separate Luma Chroma or S video input. No doubt I need to flick that over. Yep, there we go. And our controls are all still set at the midpoint, so we're definitely lacking a bit of color in this image. Can still boost that back up, but yeah, it's a bit lacking in the color. And I can see boosting up the color, we can get those blue lines to show back up again. So this thing still is not happy. So it still doesn't look happy. I can see there's plenty of misconvergence. It looks exactly the same as we saw before. Let's just test out these different inputs. So this is our monochrome input, which gives you a green screen and it also removes any filtering from the uh, video signal. So you do get a very sharp looking green monochrome screen. So it'd be good for something like the Apple II or the Commodore 128 in 80 column mode, but obviously you're limited to monochrome green. So there is quite a bit more saturation with composite versus S-Video, but then again, these monitors are designed for Commodore video, which uses one volt peak to peak on the chroma signal, whereas S-Video is 300 millivolts peak to peak. So that could be something to do with it. But uh, in that case, we just boost up the color a little bit. All right, cool. So the input selector switch is working. Let's try and calibrate this thing. I think the first thing I wanna do is actually center this image properly. So we'll bring up the full size grid and yeah. So the image has definitely shifted down quite a bit. Overall, it's about the right height. So we just wanna bring this up. Unfortunately, these three controls at the front don't allow us to do that. We've got vertical hold, horizontal position and vertical height. So we can stretch it out, but we can't actually shift the whole thing upwards. The control for that is in the back here somewhere. It's probably impossible to see on camera, but it's right down in the middle of the board. Very convenient. looks better. So at least our image looks nice and centered. The next thing I want to do is try and fix up this misconvergence. Okay, so after spending a good amount of time messing with the convergence rings on this thing, this is where we're at. Now I'll give you a close up look in a minute, but I will explain that the convergence rings on these are not for the faint hearted. You do need to have the monitor powered on when you're playing with these things, and you want to make sure to mark the original position before you go adjusting them. Now I didn't record any of that because I'm not great at it. Um, I can usually get a better result than what I started with, but it does take me a long time and you really need to be concentrating on what you're doing when you have your hands messing around with the back of the CRT. Now, while I was in there, I did also pull the yoke back and have a look at the yoke windings underneath because sometimes the glue that they use on these, I think it becomes like hydroscopic, so it absorbs moisture and that can actually eat the enamel coating on the yoke wires and then you end up with either open wires or a shorted yoke. So I had a look under there and I'm pretty happy that the yoke is still in good condition. So we won't have to worry about that. The uh, little convergence strip that they had on there also came off. In fact, the end of it where there's a little tiny magnet inside, this part was just floating around inside the yoke. 
So that's probably why we have poor convergence on this top right corner, because that's where the convergence strip was and it's obviously fallen apart. So I'll replace that because that top right corner is still a bit of a mess. And I also tried to track down the color issue when using separate Luma Chroma because the colors were quite low. And even with a Commodore 64, which outputs the one volt Chroma signal, it still has really low colors on the Luma Chroma input. So um, I couldn't work out where that issue was. And I went around the schematics looking at every component from the Chroma input all the way up to where it goes into the jungle chip didn't find any issues. So there is likely still a fault in there somewhere, but I cannot find it. It could be the jungle chip itself, but I don't really feel like replacing that. So what I did instead was just bodge a little jumper link over a resistor in the chroma line, and that boosted up the colors a little bit. Still not as saturated as the composite input, but it'll have to do. So there's still a couple of things that I do want to show, which is setting the focus and screen voltages, along with replacing that convergence strip, see if we can get the convergence spot on, and then we'll look at getting the colors accurate. So I've just focused the main camera on the CRT itself and turned off the lights in front of it. So we should have a pretty good shot of the CRT at the moment. Let's have a look at the convergence first up. All right, here's our convergence pattern again, and I can see there's a little bit of red separating from these dots up here and a little bit of blue on this side. So it's still slightly misconverged and the black background is looking a little bit gray. The brightness and contrast are set at their mid positions. So I'm going to adjust the screen voltage, which is located on the flyback transformer under this little metal plate here. Uh, and I'm using a ceramic tool to do this because I don't really want to stick a metal screwdriver in there. So I'm just going to bring it down just slightly. So the image looks completely black in the background, just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is add a new convergence strip. So you do need to do this while the CRT is on. So again, you want to be very wary of where you're putting your hands. And uh, these come from a seller on eBay. I think they're based in Canada. So uh, I'll put a link to these in the video description. But we're just going to stick this end here, which has a very small magnet on it, in behind the yoke. And in the 240p test suite, I'm going to go into the monoscope pattern because I like this one the best. I'm just going to turn the color all the way down so we don't have any interference from potentially any color circuits. And yeah, there's a good bit of separation on that top corner there with the red line going above the white. So with our convergence strip, you can see that if I push it in really far, everything gets even worse. If I take it all the way out, we've got that red line and somewhere in between we'll hopefully get a good result. And while I'm working on this corner, it is also affecting the other corner. So sometimes you just have to make a compromise. And trying a convergence strip in the other corner uh, just makes it worse, no matter where I put it. So I'm just gonna leave that out. I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. So I'm gonna press this down because it's just got a little bit of sticky adhesive on the back of it and that'll hold it in place. It's not perfect, but it's better than what it was, and it hasn't messed up this side. And here's our convergence pattern again. Yeah, still not quite perfect, and still a little bit messy on this corner. Yeah, that's, that's as good as we're going to get. Adding another convergence strip just makes it even worse. I think if this wedge wasn't here, I might be able to get that in a slightly better position, but uh, I don't really have a source for um, these type of wedges, so I'm going to leave it in place. That's all looking pretty good. Let's try adjusting the focus, see if we can get this any sharper. It doesn't really matter what pattern you have it on. Uh, it's pretty easy to see if you're out of focus. So another trim pot on the flyback itself. This time it's the one up the top of the flyback. And if I turn it one way, oh yeah, we did get a bit sharper. And if I keep going, it starts to become blurry. And going the other way, it's blurry. So you want to get it you just want to play around with it until you find that sweet spot in the middle. I think that's going to be right there. That looks really good. Now the color. So yeah, that's the color at the midpoint, which is a little bit washed out. Should be up around here somewhere. 
An easy way to set the color is just to find something that has, you know, people's faces. So you want to set it for natural skin tones. What I'm going to use to set the color is actually this. It's a color filter that came with the Digital Video Essentials DVD that I bought a good 20 years ago, probably. So uh, let's see how it's done with one of these. So I'll bring up the color bars with the gray reference. So you can see this has a blue, a green and a red filter. We're going to use the blue filter and this is pretty tricky to show on camera. But looking through the blue filter, we want to have every second box look the same blue as the background behind it with black boxes in between. So that's what the pattern normally looks like. And through the blue filter, we should have sort of alternating black and blue boxes. And then through the green filter, we should have three green and three what look like almost black. And through the red filter, I think you have like two black boxes and then two red boxes and then a single black on the end. Uh, again, very tricky to show this on camera as I've just realized, but this all looks pretty good when I'm looking directly through the filter and not looking through a camera, looking through a filter, looking to a CRT. That's uh, it's quite the challenge. <laughs> And the Super Nintendo doesn't have perfectly accurate colors for this test either. So let's back out of this and see what it looks like. Aha, that looks pretty damn good. Let me bring up a comparison to what it looked like before we started and what it looks like now. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, I think. I think that's as good as this CRT is going to get. Um, it's not a model that I'd recommend seeking out. You're much better off looking for a 1084 if you want a Commodore monitor. But um, in saying that, it looks all right. Um, it certainly looked good back in the day when we had one, but then again, I was comparing that to a late 70s color CRT that was in the lounge room that was like 19 inches and only had RF. So using this monitor was great at the time. And I'm pretty sure we only had composite hooked up to it because I probably had no idea what Luma Chroma was when I was eight or nine. So um, it's an all right monitor. It probably means more to me than it does to most people. So um, like I said, don't really recommend seeking this one out if you're looking for a Commodore monitor. But uh, I think that's gonna do it for this one. Um, I'll probably retro bright this at some point or at least try to but it's the middle of winter here so retro brighting is tricky enough as it is especially with something this size so um this might go back up on the shelf after I've played a little bit of Super Mario so that is it for this one thank you all for watching um leave any comments if you have any in the comments below of course and um be sure to like subscribe Hit the notification bell if you want um, and a huge thanks to the people that support the channel on patreon uh, if you want to do that links to the patreon page are in the video description you'll get ad free early access along with some other stuff and also help me keep creating videos like this one so um i hope you enjoyed it and i will catch you in the next one bye i'm very side on to the screen Hardly see. Oh yeah. Do 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 do